to the Q&A with the wonderful Shannon Farnan. Um, Shannon, welcome and thank you for being here so much. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. And let me get my phone situated and cradled. All right. All right. So Shannon, um, I already got the wonderful chance to talk to you yesterday. I cannot stop punning. We had fun. No, <laughs> no apologies. Um, <laughs> nothing wrong with a good pun. So I got a really great chance to talk to you yesterday for our Wonder Woman at 80 panel, but I'm really excited to get more into you specifically in your career and your time on Super Friends. Um, my first question is that, so you were actually really the first person to portray Wonder Woman across live action or animation. I, I kind of looked it up to make sure I was right on that. And <laughs> she had a little appearance on the Brady Bunch. Right. Years, right? Yes. But we're not really going to count that because I was just like a no. way. And, and as it happens, um, Lloyd Schwartz is a dear friend of mine. He's the son of oh, Sherwood man. Schwartz, who did the Brady Bunch. That's wonderful. So, so it's okay. She can have some credit for her short little stint as Wonder Woman. I mean, she, so yes, yeah, she does get credit, but you were the first person to portray her in a, you know, meatier, more extended version. Well, of I feel but like, I feel like I gave her everything that she was written to have. That's what I feel that I gave her. Exactly. Exactly. Whereas the one off Brady Bunch was fun and like, just, you know, thrown in, but so, <laughs> so obviously you couldn't have researched past portrayals of the character aside from the comics. So, um, right. so what, what research did you put into creating the character? Like, what did you do? Well, I grew up reading the comics and, um, oh, that helps of course, because you already have a vision of this character and very, you just start sort of wondering and then you start Googling, what did we do before Google? I don't even remember. And then of course, <laughs> later on, I met Christy Marston, who is a fabulous woman and has all kinds of information. And I've read various things about Wonder Woman. Um, you just start absorbing it, it like comes into the pores and, but never occurring to me, of course, until I started doing the role that she was not just a part, she was um, an archetype for women written that way, written for that purpose. And I had a really a sense of responsibility from that day forward. So I'm, I'm very, um, so I feel like I'm uh, protective of her in a sense when they make changes that I don't particularly think we're in the author's mind. I feel a little irritated. <laughs> I get over it because everything in life changes. We know that. And there's nothing wrong with Wonder Woman morphing into all the wonderfulness that she is. Yeah, I get irritated too sometimes. <laughs> um, I'm sure you, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, well, well we'll say positive <laughs> well my, no it's positive even my irritation is positive and it's momentary i mean my my sense of the costume is definitely yes the way it was originated not necessarily with the little pantaloons or the skirt that's not <laughs> important but the sense that she was written as an american superhero yes and then that was sort of drifting away and and then they muscled her up and then she started looking like an androgynous person. <laughs> but right. you know what? You can't stop it. You can't stop the change. And as long as they keep getting Wonder Woman out there, she'll be fine. <laughs> I agree. I, I think it's a good time to be a Wonder Woman fan. Yeah. It, it, it's, it was always a good time to be a Wonder Woman fan, but right now is a really, it's a golden And we era. need Wonder Woman we need people, women, we need women, especially to step up and own the strength that they have within them. It's not like women are born without inner strength and endurance and fortitude. I mean, there are those who, who grow up being taught 
that they need to be in the background, maybe not with those words, but it's in, implied. And I disagree with that completely. My mother never brought me up that way. Thank goodness. Maybe that's why I was able to do Wonder Woman for so long. I love that. I love that. And you bringing this up actually uh, segues into one of my next questions, which is, um, aside from Wonder Woman, what other woman or women, fictional or real, inspire you? Oh my, that list is so long. <laughs> I, I, you say that. I mean, truly, I have, I believe it was Time Magazine, I have a copy of the 100 most influential women. I mean, mm -hmm. I have a wonderful book that is featured on photographs, dynamite photographs of all older women. And, and it's magnificent. It, it shows in every picture, no matter how they've had to deal and get through life, it shows in every picture, the beauty that is still on their face. So I wouldn't dare pick <laughs> out of the most inspirational per, okay, it would probably be my mother. <laughs> you know? okay. But as Perfect. far as famous women, it's there's an endless list. And for years and years and years, they weren't put into history books very much. They weren't talked about very much. A woman's place was in the home in her shirtwaist dress. Yep. So. I like the well-behaved women rarely make history quote, even though I know that was the original intention of the quote. But it's a good quote. <laughs> I love that quote so much. Uh, yes. So I think we could do a whole one hour or two hour segment on that alone, but I'll keep this. <laughs> yeah. um, that was that was a beautiful answer, quite honestly. <laughs> well, I have to I have to um, answer a request here from Will Rogers, who is the most amazing writer of two massive books about Super Friends. I have to say to him, "Great Hera." <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, there they oh. are. There they are, and I was privileged to swallow them both of them and I put a forward in those books for Will oh wonderful yeah we, we definitely have to give it a thank you you're <laughs> welcome <laughs> I have to give a shout out to Will like oh I love that um so kind of piggybacking on my first question a little bit uh one of our fans Lisa Reber asked if you um if you used women in the military at all um when crafting Wonder Woman, thinking about military women and warrior style at all? Well, the warriors, definitely. The women warriors, the Greek goddesses and, and yep. the Roman goddesses and the Egyptian history. That was what I thought of. I had no thought whatsoever of the military. I don't consider, I mean, it just didn't cross my mind, the military. Yeah, absolutely. All right. I'm multitasking reading the chat too. So let me. All right. And um, so kind of switching tacks, even though again, I could talk feminism with you forever. Like <laughs> we have to do this again. I'm, <laughs> I'm calling you out, Shannon. <laughs> we could start with the suffragettes and then we could go to feminism and then we could go to the fact that women still don't have equal rights. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, so Joe Event asked, um, from your perspective, what differences were there between the Wendy, Marvin, Wonder Twins, and Challenge of Episodes? Uh, with Jan and Zena, you mean? Yeah. The differences between Wendy and Marvin and Jan and Zena? Yes. I, I Zan agree. and Jana? Oh, I screwed up on the names. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's Sunday. It's Sunday. We're alive. It's Sunday. <laughs> you know, those characters were added for humor in both cases. And I thought they served their purpose very well. Um, there's not too much to, sh to say. I love the people. Michael's still one of my favorite people in the world. Um, they, were, they were adorable. They were grown-ups, of course, that did the roles. But... 
they were adorable characters and I think people liked it. And of course, my all time favorite voice actor, Frank Welker, was in all the shows doing various and sundry gaggles of geese and <laughs> <laughs> you, you name it, he did it. So it just added fun to our day to be working with the, the little kids, we called them. I love that. Um, okay, so so I had this on my list and Brad's asking it again. Um, so since Steve Trevor didn't really appear on the series, marry, date, or dump. So you have to classify each of these guys. Superman, Batman, and Aquaman. Uh, which one would you marry? Which one would you date? And which one would, would you dump? <laughs> <laughs> well, as a character or as an individual actor? <laughs> oh, maybe you should answer it for We could get a whole thing going here. No. Uh, okay, so as Shannon, which one? And then as Wonder Woman? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to go there. Wait a minute. Is everybody <laughs> still alive? <laughs> no, actually, <laughs> they're not. So I guess I can go there. Um, <laughs> Superman would be the uh, marrying type for yeah. the character, for sure. Um, it is interesting that they didn't give her the boyfriend, isn't it? <laughs> but this series just didn't go there. Um, as far as Shannon goes, and this would have to be with the actor, I think Norman Alden was the most gentle of men, and he played Aquaman. Um, <laughs> Olin, uh, <laughs> I loved Olin, but I'd have to dump Olin when it came to the marriage thing. <laughs> Olin was a lot older than I am, but Batman and uh, Wonder Woman now, that's a possibility. Although I don't think Wonder Woman would have liked the shy man type. And of course, Batman covered his face and pretended, oh, yeah. you know, so. And who else? And oh, I said them all. Yep, you said them all. You got it. <laughs> all right. Did I win the prize? <laughs> yes, you win a prize. Your prize is that you have to talk to me for 45 more minutes. <laughs> 45 more minutes. Oh, my gosh. I know. I know. We'll get through it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So, yeah, this chat is going crazy. Everyone loves you. Oh, Everyone loves you. Thank you. Even if it's not true, I'll take it as truth. Well, myself included, myself included, especially after getting to talk to you personally, you're now my favorite Wonder Woman. <laughs> I didn't have a specific favorite before because it's so hard to choose, but you're, you're the Wonder Woman of my heart now. Um, Those okay, questions so we, are coming in so fast, you're going to need an assistant. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay, so did you all work um, a nine to five day or did you work six days a week? Basically, what was the schedule like? Well, that's a new question. Um, we worked one day a week when wow. we worked. We worked seasonally. We didn't work all year. We did the, the run of the season in a run of weeks. Um, we did work all day because the scripts were long and the cast was large. We would sit down first at the table, large table in a large recording room and read through together as a cast the script for the day. And that's when we would learn what our incidental roles would be for the day. And we would just do it and wing it and get through the read. And then we would usually break. I don't remember if we broke for lunch. I don't remember. Oh, well, food wasn't important when you're Superman <laughs> and Wonder Woman. Right. Um, we then worked. We stood in front of the mics and performed the show. Wow. And um, so this question is for me, but uh, so what was your favorite incidental secondary role that you got to voice? I think it was um, a French scientist or a German scientist. I always liked it when they really stretched, me, you know, really asked me to put it out there. And I was fairly facile with different accents. So that was good. And I could do f fair stretch of ages. So um, I guess 
every time they threw something at me that was more challenging where that became my favorite part for the for the month i love that all right and um so th says he definitely loves you i think th is a he oh, thank you th uh will roger says you and norm and alden were great as wonder woman and aquaman in those first two seasons thank all you right. the chat thank keeps you. resetting people <laughs> no uh, everyone loves you like seriously okay um did you ever hear from jack angel who was flash hawkman and samurai or bill calloway who was hawkman and bizarro i have not heard from bill calloway actually since it ended i have no clue what he did from there or where he went from there um i never saw him on screen although i don't know if he worked on screen but i also never saw him Again, which is interesting. Um, the other one was? Uh, Norman? Yeah, I think. No, Jack Angel, yes. Jack Angel, yes. Through the years, I have occasionally run into Jack and uh, Jack is married to an agent and um, he just got better looking with age. Wow. <laughs> I assume he's still working some out there, although I don't know, everybody has a right to retire. Absolutely. Yeah, everyone should have the right to rest, but if you want to keep working and you still enjoy it, like also. Of course, it's, you know, this is fun work. It's hardly, it, <laughs> it's hardly called a job when you really like what you're doing, but, you know, the, there's not all that much glamour in the, in the work that we do. It's uh, hard work. It's a hard focus. It's hard hours in many cases. But we do it because we love it. Yeah, I was I was going to ask you because I think a lot of people think you just go in the studio and you just read the lines. But I think a lot of people don't realize how physical voice acting is. So That's true. yeah, can you can you talk about that for a minute before and then I'll get to more of the questions in the chat. But well, you have to, to you have to keep your instrument in shape and your voice is part of your instrument it's all it's all muscle it's all you know it's like a scale your voice is a scale your voice has um fullness and depth and one has to be very careful as one ages you don't allow all of that to get lost so you have to keep doing it and singing and and working the muscle as you do your body you cannot just decide to let some part go because you don't feel like it so yes i consider the whole body my instrument whether i'm doing voice work or not but when you say it's hard work everybody who does anything has to put in the work if you're going to be successful at it and stay with it a long time I agree. I agree. All right. Let me scroll up on the chat because we definitely have some more good questions. Um, Hi, everybody that's popping in. Yeah, uh, we're getting a lot of people. Okay, so did you have uh, freedom or opportunity to, to deviate from the script? This is from Conroy. Well, we were, we could all give suggestions. Uh, the first director, Wally Burr, was very um, strong in exactly what he wanted. Uh, to the point of actually giving people readings if he felt like that's what he should do. Uh, but he would always listen to suggestions. And uh, he tried to recognize the talents of various individual people. And he ran a big cast. I mean, the main, there were main four of us, but then, you know, it went from there, the main four, and then on and on, often 10, 12 mics at a time. And then we brought in a lot of guests villains and guests good people and it was a job for a director i can only imagine oh all right and then john payne wants to know what was it like to work with i'm going to butcher this first name i'm sorry olin sul olin, Su olin sule olin sule I, I olin sule i have a wonderful story about olin and for those of you who popped in maybe yesterday, you already heard it. But Olin is, was a great deal older than I. I was sort of like the, the young kid on the block there. And I knew him when I 
went to the first job, the first super friend's job. But the reason I knew him was years before, I had gotten a call from my agent to go do a home savings and loan commercial. And I said, okay, give me the, st the stats. And I showed up at, I think it was KTLA or KTTV. And um, it was a standard home savings and loan commercial, the, the person who was representing the company. And then this couple, and in the makeup room in walks this man and they said, oh, Olin Sule, meet Shannon Farnan, and Olin is going to be your husband. Well, I have to tell you, I was pretty shocked that they would put somebody that much older as my husband. And I was feeling pretty down about it. <laughs> but that was a, a lovely, fortuitous meeting because he was a lovely, lovely man. And um, he, he just became a very special friend. Aww. I love that. So did you usually record together with like the special guest stars? Oh, uh, we always worked, aimed and tried to all be together. Yeah. Only when we had other jobs in the business and they always gave us that time if something came up and we would go back on our own into a smaller booth and do our part and uh, they'd feel they would edit that in. Let me look at the next one. Okay, so Trevor asked, um, did you read the old stories, which I don't think he had joined the chat yet, but um, you had mentioned that you you grew up reading the old oh, Wonder Woman yeah. stories, right? The comic books, yes. I love that. I feel like that's the best preparation you could get. Well, uh, it wasn't deliberate, it was <laughs> It was meant to be. It wasn't intentional, but I think it was meant to be if there is such a thing. Um, and then Kristen asks, if you could use the lasso of truth on one person, who would it be? <sighs> I know the answer, by the way. I'm not looking and groping for the answer. Um, but I would have used it a long time ago on a orange haired man with an orange face who's about to leave Washington DC. <laughs> you and me both. I would have used it. That's all there is to it. <laughs> you and me both. Um, and my uh, wonderful co-planner just direct messaged me to ask, were there any like bloopers or gag reels as you guys were recording? <laughs> we were all human. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You could be in the process of giving a wonderful delivery and then all of a sudden, you know, things happen. You say funny things, you start laughing at each other and before you know it, you're all rolling on the floor and they're waiting to record. And <laughs> we, yeah, we had it all. I never saw, I mean, they didn't, as far as I know, they didn't record anything. I must ask, I, a good friend of mine is the art director of 30 years over at Hanna-Barbera. I'll have to ask him if he knows if they had any uh, blooper reels or voice reels. <laughs> I would love to hear those. I, I would too. <laughs> um, Eric Smith asked, what was your favorite episode? Like, where do you feel like you sh you shined the most? I don't. <laughs> I can't possibly name it because I really don't know it. I would have to look at all of them again to come to that conclusion because you just don't keep those details. I mean, everyone was wonderful. I really felt honored to work with the people that I did. And I was watching them as much as they were probably watching me. So I just don't remember one that where I could walk away and say, oh, that's the best one. <laughs> I just don't. I feel like that's a good experience to have. Like, that's oh. a good problem to have where you can't choose a favorite. Yeah, I mean, we just love doing the show. Oh, I love that. I love to hear that. All right. Let's see what else. I'm just, don't mind me while I scroll up on the chat. Again, it's going crazy because. Well. You are loved. You are very loved. Um, Somebody so, asked about Brad. Brad wants to know that he knew I was a guest on Dream of Jeannie. 
Yes. Oh, yep. Why don't we answer that one next? Okay. So how said, was that Barbara Eden too. How was that experience? Fun working the show. I, I, the only, I didn't work with Barbara. I was in the makeup room at the same time, but I didn't work with her. I worked with Larry all day long and got to know him pretty well and wound up buying his station wagon and tent trailer and used it for years to for the family to go camping. Well, that's quite the souvenir. <laughs> <laughs> well, I paid for it. <laughs> true, true. All right. Um, so Brad wanted to know, what are your feelings on Wonder Woman often taking the damsel in distress role on Super Friends? But Will Rogers defended Wonder Woman and said that she often saved the heroes too. So I'll let you answer and put well, in your sense. Will should answer that question. He's <laughs> far more versed at it than I am. I mean, I never, I never complained about anything they did with the role. So. Shannon's Wonder Woman, she was a shining star in the 1977 episode, Will the World Collide with the Green Kryptonite Planet? Old Soleil with the voice of the evil Professor Firo. <laughs> what did I tell you? I love it. I, 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 love, I love this kind of discourse because we, I love it. I love it. All right, let's see. Um, okay, next up. Brad was wondering, did Wonder Woman and Cheetah record together? So oh, did you sure. record with? Yeah. Yes, they did. Marlene <laughs> Aragon was the voice of Cheetah. She <laughs> was, and she was very, very good. We need him all the time, just sort of in the background, sort of straightening us out. <laughs> I love it. Um, thank you, Will, for just being our support. I, this is great. All right. I hope I'm not missing anyone's question. Sorry if I do miss anything, guys. Um, okay, so. Oh, Shannon, apparently you and Olan were the voices of Jonathan and Martha Kent. That's cool. That's not a question. I'm just recognizing yeah, that. Observation. Yeah, that, that's neat. I, oh, I love the Kents. Um, I love the Superman origin, of course. Um, okay, Conroy wants to know, when did you realize that voice acting was your calling? That's a good question. I never realized voice acting was my calling. <laughs> I knew that acting was my calling because I grew up in a show business family. And to, to us kids, isn't that what everybody did? Wasn't everybody in show business? <laughs> it never occurred to us that there was any other job uh, that you have to learn as you grow up. But I knew, I mean, I was putting on putting on plays and writing plays and using costumes that were too big and having my whole neighborhood to join in. And we, we had a basement with, we had our own curtain and we would uh, take money for shows and have treats. I was acting right away. <laughs> Love that. So, yeah, well, clearly you have the knack for it. And <laughs> I think so. Yeah. I, I mean, yes, one would hope so, but no, clear, clearly you have a talent. So you were, you were meant, you were meant to be here. All right. And, um, I had two sisters in this too. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It, that is some genetic blessings. <laughs> yes, uh, it certainly is. And, and my dad and his two brothers were well-known musicians and orchestra leaders and arrangers and composers. Quite the talent, and might I say, quite good genes because you're Whoa. very beautiful. Thank very you. beautiful. What was I going to do? But do what I do, you know. They would. They, you're going to be a secretary. What? <laughs> you're going to be a doctor. <laughs> Most people would say, "Oh, good, my daughter's going to be a doctor." My parents would have said, "Really." <laughs> All right, um, Joel has a good question. All right, so are your children and hopefully grandchildren, do they love your work and um, that you're still working? Um, they do like the fact that I, you know, people still call me and hire me. They do like that. They're proud of me for sure. Um, That's great. They, you know, you're pretty used to me working. So it's not like if I say, oh, I have a 
job today that it's anything surprising. Um, not to put a downer on it, but I did lose my son when he was 24, but my oh, daughter my is going to be 50 in February. And um, she, she's proud of her mom. When I always hear people tell me, oh, Julie told me all about you. you know, so. <laughs> Well, I'm very sorry for your loss, but it, that's hard. That's very hard. Um, Joel, Actually, that's Joel. impossible, but we do it anyway. <laughs> yeah, that really is. Joel echoed my sentiments. I'm sure everyone here echoes. Thank you for sharing with us also. That's, it's hard to be vulnerable. Yeah. That's, um, yeah. Sorry, put a downer on it. <laughs> No, that's real. It's real. It's, I feel like that's, again, that that's the bravest of all to be real with what's going on. And it's beautiful that your daughter is so proud of you too. And like you said, you keep going on. And my daughter is an artist. She could have been a beautiful model, but I think she didn't want to do anything that mommy was involved in. <laughs> I'm pretty <laughs> sure that was her reason, <laughs> but she is an art teacher and uh, couldn't get away from her artistic means. What grade does she teach? She teaches kindergarten through fifth. Bless her. <laughs> yes, bless her and please pay her more. Please pay her yeah. more, God. <laughs> mm -hmm. I briefly worked as a teacher's aide and I love kids and I if I could have made a living doing it, I would have stayed, but. That's the problem. I mean, That's it's, hard. it's either that the money's not enough or that it too much to cost too much to live. You know, you pick, you pick one. A <laughs> uh, little both, little yeah. both, but especially art, art was my favorite class to accompany the kids to, but especially seeing how hard it was for the art teachers teaching art, like, oh, bless her. <laughs> and now she teaches five show five shows a day. Listen to me. <laughs> show business in here. <laughs> five Zoom classes a day, if you can imagine sitting Zoom. with all this equipment where she can show the children what she's doing in the way of the art thing. I mean, it's it's an undertaking. They just art don't pay them. To elementary schoolers via Zoom. Okay, your daughter. I'm sorry, Shannon, but I think your daughter is the real Wonder Woman in the family. She is for sure. For sure she is. <laughs> I wouldn't sit there for five hours a day with cameras and stuff and doing, I mean, no way. Oh, hey, hey, Joel says he's a paraprofessional for special needs children. That's that's what I did briefly. And I, I would have kept doing it if I could have. Thank you. Thank so, you. More like you. Bless you, Joel. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So let's 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 go back up and thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm honored. So I think the question I okay, so Trevor asked, is there a chance for you to cameo in a future DC project? So yes, we're starting it. We're gonna start a fan campaign to get you in um Wonder Woman 3. But other than that, any other talks of cameos? I'm I'm available. I'm available. I'm in. I'm in good shape. I still know how to act. So, you look amazing. You read look the word. Amazing. Well, I just, okay. I just finished um, two very what I consider very funny, a very funny role. I did two Coin Master video commercials. Coin Master is a game I guess a lot of adults play, uh, where you attack each, attack each other's villages and things, and they use. Um, celebrity types in their commercials as part of the gag. And I did one for Coin Master and one for Pet Master. And the role I had was so much fun. I basically was Joan Collins. So it was way over the top. <laughs> big, it. dramatic. Darling, how are you? Please. You know, oh my gosh. Lots of fun. And that was, uh, that was uh, just a couple of months ago. Oh, I like the suggestion from Brad. Brad said you should play the president of the United States in Wonder Woman 3. <laughs> I should. I should. I love that. And I Aaron should said, have been the president for the last four years. It would be a different world. Oh, my gosh. You've got my vote. <laughs> Eric Smith said that his wife just said that you are so beautiful. Um, yep, I agree. Oh, 
Thank you. I agree. Okay. So scrolling up, um, Joel wanted to know, do you have a biography out or do you have one coming out? You mean a written biography? Mm -hmm. No, I do not. I have a short biography that I sort of include with my uh, oh, resume, spring. my master resume. And um, other than that, uh, actually, I sent that to Dan, to Dan Johnson. Joel says, write one, please. And he was also <laughs> crying. So I, I, I saw him wringing his eyes out. Yeah, oh he would have been gosh. a good pantomime per artist. Yeah, I agree. I think you are very fascinating. I read your biography. <laughs> oh, I should put it on tape and then let somebody else write it. Well, we have some writers on here, so I think we could. <laughs> I think we could make this happen. <laughs> I think we start getting our heads together. I'm going to do a, a film. Um, I've been hired by John Reddick, who is a major collector of Wonder Woman uh, paraphernalia. And I'm going to work for him this month sometime. Nice. So, nice. Yeah, he wants to have well, all his. What? Okay, well, you might want to check. Write the biography and then read it as Wonder Woman. That would be fantastic. Yeah. That would be the whole ball game, wouldn't it? <laughs> I like Brad's title. I volunteer my services. I would be happy to volunteer my services for you, ma'am. I love it. I love it. Brad suggested the title "Paradise Found: The Shannon <laughs> Farnham Story." Perfect. Yeah, lovely. Right. Put that after the meeting, I'll let you ladies get back to it. Okay. <laughs> All right, um, so we have from Trevor, is there any sort of super um, DC planning a one-off Super Friends animated movie that you know of? Nothing that I'm aware of and they need to have to face the fact that a lot of that cast would have to be new because they're gone. True, that's sad. So that's a part of maybe anybody's decision, but there's no, no reason that they couldn't re-up it. And for that matter, use a whole new cast. I mean, even don't use me if you want, but you know, it would be nice to see it again because it was a children's, I mean, let's face it, our children watched it with their parents too. And, and people, when they come to the conventions and come to the table, I mean, some of them are in tears to actually meet me because they not only loved the character, their children now love the character. And, and that, it means so much because the show had great moral value. Um, it, it really did. It really gave lessons on behavior. Of course, today's behavior in the world has changed and it probably would seem a little dated right now, but perhaps there'll be a time and place for it. I think we need a little old fashioned right now to quote um, Phil Coulson from Marvel to Captain America. <laughs> Dan's going amen because he, he and I were just talking about that line, but we, we need a little more of that. Uh, yeah. Conroy is saying he would love to hear you do a podcast talking about current events. So he's, he, he's volunteering you for. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Conrad, let's go to work. <laughs> um, so I saw, and the chat is scrolling so fast again, because people are so excited about you. Oh, I, thank I you people. I love you. Super fans. <laughs> I didn't catch who this was from, but I already know the answer, but I'll let you talk about it. Someone asked if you're going, if you have plans to play Wonder Woman again, and I know the answer is yes. So talk about that um, for the charity thing you're doing with Andy. Well, Andy is did it all really. We did a we sat for six hours on, on that to put it out, but it's a two hour film, Justice League, uh, Mortals, Mortals, Justice League Mortal. Mortal. Yeah, and he will have that out, I assume, very quickly now. Yeah, I'll, um, I'm not sure if Dan has an image, otherwise I have the image saved. One of us will throw it up at the end of this because yeah. I think that's a, yeah. we got to plug this. I'm not <laughs> even, I want to sure, hear it. I'm not quite sure the um, avenues he's going to present it. I'm sure on Facebook, but I don't know if he's going to try to do anything else with it. Yeah, 
we'll have to, we'll have to watch Andy's page for it. But I, I know it I know it's benefiting charity. Do you know which charity it's benefiting? Um, I did before you asked me. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm putting you on the spot. That's uh, okay. We'll get, we'll get the details and. <laughs> It's something, oh shoot, I hate when that happens. <laughs> it happens. You, you'll have to get that because uh, it's important. It's a very good charity. And yeah, by the way, such a nice person, Andy, is he asked mm -hmm. us as performers if we had a favorite charity that we would like to also include, which I thought was really sweet of him. But I, I didn't, I said, you know, we all, put filled in the blanks on a sheet and uh, it it's I think he's done a great job of choosing it and if anyone doesn't know the story of Justice League Mortal long before there was a there were even the Christian Bale Batman movies DC was considering making a Justice League movie and this is the script from that movie that didn't get made because they were considering making this movie. They had it all cast. I'm sorry if I'm stepping on your toes, Shannon. <laughs> no, no, you're doing well. Go for it. Okay. So they, they, they had this movie all cast. Army Hammer was Batman. He's the one that sticks out in my mind. They had it all cast and then the writer's strike happened and a bunch of other things happened to make it unravel. So I remember following it like as a fan and watching it fall apart. So I'm, I'm really excited about this actually. <laughs> so I'm excited to hear you as Wonder Woman because I think you're going to do better than the it was like a supermodel they had as Wonder Woman not to I don't I don't like to make out of fashion actresses well I probably sounded better <laughs> yeah it, it, you're right Eric Smith it was Megan Gale um, I've never seen her in anything I just know that I think she was a supermodel with no other experience maybe she would have done wonderful I don't like to bash other women so I was just iffy <laughs> I won't bash you, but you were icky. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 that sounded bad, but but I was worried that they had cast her just because she looked good, and that that's often can't... the case. It's often the case. Many of my, not many, but several of my voiceover jobs over the years were to completely replace all the vocals everything, all the sound that a particular actress would make because she did such a poor job. That's so sad. That's the truth. Wow. And then were, were you those uncredited because they didn't want people to know? That's right. I thought so. That's right. Ooh. Uh, that's the that's nature of the business. Um, I also had the opportunity and privilege of replacing the the voice of an actress who developed a condition called spasmodic dysphonia. And it, um, I knew her, I knew her. I think we'd been on a few uh, on-screen uh, dramatic auditions. I was not on the audition, which I found very interesting because we were in the same age with lousy agent. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a prominent role. It was a series called um, First Monday. And they were all Supreme Court judges. And one of the judges developed this vocal condition. And there's nothing you can do. It's a, it's like a, what, I, I don't know if it's a disease, but it's, it's like that. And it, or not to be able to speak normally. Oh. So that was the most challenging voiceover job I had because I had to voice track all the dialogue to her mouth and oh. make it sound normal. So that was 13 weeks of a series and I would come out of the booth <laughs> totally wiped out every time. Wow. Yeah. I'm exhausted just thinking about that. <laughs> it was exhausting, but... I, I was very happy that uh, the producer decided to use me. Wow. And on a lighter note, um, Trevor asked, Wonder Woman, pants, yes or no? But then Brad replied, this is Zoom, nobody's wearing pants. <laughs> I'm wearing pants. I won't yeah. tell you what they look like. <laughs> They're very casual and I have no shoes on. Same here, the beauty <laughs> of Zoom. 
But do you think Wonder Woman should wear pants or no? <laughs> no, I love Wonder Woman's costume. I mean, I love the costume that she was wearing when I did The Voice. I mean, sexy, but not throwing it in your face. Um, yeah. I loved it. So if she wears pants, I hope they that she's got a great figure and they fit well. <laughs> I agree. I hope whatever she wears that she's happy. <laughs> <laughs> and that it, honestly, that it looks good in the stylized yeah. comic version. Yeah. Like that's that's kind of how I feel because I've seen some costumes where they're tr it doesn't look good from a design standpoint. Yeah, for sure. Oh, I do. Did, did I have I mentioned that I also do gay superhero movies? No, you know, Wait, duh, what's this. the matter with me? I've done <laughs> two. They're called uh, The Power of Serve. You can Google it. I've done two films for him, and we will be doing a third one shortly. Um, and the superhero, Serge, is gay. I mean, he's, he's that's part of why he's doing this, so we can have a gay superhero. And I started out as his, um, well, I remained. They, my nickname they gave me was Mavis. And Mavis was artificial intelligence for him and always sort of popping into screen and tell, sort of taking care of him like a mom, making sure he doesn't go off the track too far and doesn't do anything crazy. Wonder and mom. most of the time I was seen in a tube, like a television screen. And now they're going to give me my own special costume, which is quite elegant, I might add, and we'll have an ego, I wonder why, <laughs> I on love the it. Uh, front of that gorgeous purple costume. So. I have to look this up. Yeah, the power of surge. He has his own. He goes to all the cons and interviews everybody, and he's in costume, his blue and silver surge costume. Good looking young man who happens to be a lawyer in real life. I love this. It's yeah. that's very fitting because Wonder Woman is. A gay icon. <laughs> well, I was I was pleased as punch when I I he approached me when I was doing the Hollywood show, the Hollywood convention, and had this huge brochure showing me all of the people who have done cameos for him, and I mean a lot of people. But mine is more than a cameo. I'm I'm sort of a big role in his films. And apparently the audience really liked Mavis. So now it's getting bigger. Well, of course they did. Like, <laughs> how could they not? So, uh, Dan made a comment as we were talking about the pants versus no pants. He says, as long as the shoes are comfortable because crime fighting is murder on the feet. And <laughs> that's right. You have to be practical. <laughs> having done cosplay and been on my feet all day long, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's got to be very difficult yeah oh yeah especially on those floors oh boy yeah concrete floor there's nothing more difficult than a concrete floor and brad with your costume i mean oh my god he's wearing it <laughs> i know he, and he's rocking. oh hello hello <laughs> good for you brad and he's rocking it too like yeah. All right, and Joel wants to know, what's your favorite superpower of yours or Wonder Woman's? Wow, Joel, you're really getting into it. I know, he's got um, some great questions. Oh, well, Kelly? I think my, my superpower is the ability to stay calm when others around me are going crazy. That would probably be my super cup. I have a very balanced type brain in that sense. Astrological chart that really rocks. <laughs> uh, Wonder Woman's, her favorite, my favorite superpower of Wonder Woman? I mean, pick one. I mean, they're all, hey there, Michael. They're all wonderful. Yeah. How can you pick? Um, Michael. A favorite of 
Yeah, I love the lasso of truth, of course, because truth and justice is what she stands for. And I would have liked to see that used even more because it's uh, so needed in today's world. <laughs> you realize that he was the uh, inventor of the lie detector. Yes, that's the one author. of my favorite things. Not everybody realizes that, but that lasso was his Wonder Woman version of a lie detector. I love that. I, I... You can use it in Washington. Hmm? Lasso. Oh lasso. yeah, all, all over Washington, yes. Also, um, Marston's wife was one of the um, one of the suffragettes, wasn't she? I believe so. Either his wife or his mistress, one of them. I think. I think. He, I think actually they both were. Maybe. And so, it, while it's correct to call her his mistress, she wasn't a secret mistress because his wife consented to that no. arrangement, which is also in, is also very radical for that time. time. Oh my goodness! I mean, it was a triangle uh, way ahead of its time. For sure. Oh, for sure. So, so that's that's again a whole other. We could spend an hour on that. <laughs> we won't though. <laughs> we don't have another hour. <laughs> no, we we could we could have a whole weekend where I could just talk your ear off. <laughs> and I would listen. I'm a very good listener. I can tell. <laughs> now, now my daughter won't say that, but but I'm going to say it. <laughs> All right. So um. So we have. Let's see. We have more questions. Uh, you guys are asking some amazing questions. Like I, I came in with a whole list of questions and I haven't even gotten to all of them. And I'm fine with that because these are some amazing questions. Well, here's one about being on the show Emergency. Do I remember anything about yes. it? I do remember being on it. And um, I, you know, I, I don't remember what I did. <laughs> It's terrible, but you know, you go to work, you do your thing, you go home, you do the laundry. That's just the way life is. Uh, I enjoyed being on the show. I think I did more than one emergency. I know I did more than one dragnets. I, I just, I'd have to look at my, I'd have to look at my resume to tell you. Okay. I should have it beside me on the screen here. <laughs> Uh, and what about your I Dream of Jeannie gig? Did that land you your role on Dallas as Sue Ellen's secretary? I'm sorry, would you repeat the question? Uh, sorry, your I Dream of Jeannie gig, did that land you the role on Dallas? No, to... not that I know of. But you know, in this business, as in any other, the more work you do, the more work you get. That makes sense. So, uh, no, I don't remember anything dovetailing it's not like it was the same director or something but you know when you have a, an interview an audition you they see your resume and it might have made an impression I don't really know <laughs> that absolutely makes sense um and we are at the five minute mark so oh my um, goodness and we thought it would never end when we started <laughs> <laughs> it goes so fast <laughs> It does. It does. Well, I'm glad the time flew and you weren't just sitting here thinking, okay, okay, no. Kelly, I'm getting bored of you. <laughs> you are all wonderful. I'm sorry I didn't hear all your voices, but um, thank you for being so participatory. Appreciate it. Mwah. Yeah, and Eric says, we just love you. You are great. Um, thank you. Shannon, this really has been just a dream come true. Like, oh. thank you. You're gonna, if you're going to make me cry again, I'm not going to come back. <laughs> okay, I won't make you cry again. <laughs> you got me yesterday. I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> to be fair, we were all crying. Oh, okay. I feel like that makes it better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. I'm going to read all these off to you because I feel... Or are these all going to make you cry? These are all going to make you cry because every, everyone's comments are so nice. You oh. are loved. Um, okay, so we have Conroy saying, you have had an amazing career. Thanks for the stories. Jeff Breslauer saying, thank you for being a lovely person. You wow. are. Joel is saying, may life be sweet and healing. Sandra is saying, this has been lovely. Thank you. Shannon, Trevor is saying, you need to come back. 
Um, I will. Joe is saying thank you so much for the weekend. Yeah, quite honestly, I hope, Shannon, that you and I do get the chance to do something like this again, because this has been delightful. You are wonderful. I have loved your insights. Oh, thank you. And, and it's been wonderful to be here. And I appreciate Dan asking. Thank you, Dan. And I just want to say thank you also again for being a guest with us this weekend. Next time, I'm not going to let Kelly monopolize you. I'm going to, I'm going to try to get in there and get some questions <laughs> myself and some panels with you. It's been a pleasure. Okay, well, I'll, I'm, I'll be back on in an hour. Are you handling that one or no? I am. Yeah. I'm, 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 well, I'm, there you go. I know. <laughs> but no, seriously, uh, we, we <laughs> have been blessed with having some wonderful guests. And no one is more wonderful than Wonder Woman herself. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dan. Thank you all. Have a great day. And I saved the chat, so I will have a chance to look at them all myself. Awesome. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Have a good have a good afternoon. I'll probably see you in an hour. <laughs> <laughs>